So let's look at this column, which is quite interesting because as you can see, it's an I section, but <clears throat> the slightly counterintuitive thing about it is that its major axis is oriented this way, perpendicular to the direction of the bridge, which might seem peculiar, but if you think about the loads that are going through this column, the loads are actually just pure compression in most cases because they're just transferring the vertical component of the tension in these cables down to the ground through the column in compression. And so from the point of view of the loading, it doesn't really matter which way this column is oriented. But obviously, buckling can be an issue when things are compressed. And buckling, resistance to buckling, is, is affected by different things. So it's affected by the length of the column, and the column's going to be the same length whichever way we turn it. But it's also affected by the support conditions, how restrained it is. And actually, if we look at the support conditions on this column, we'll find that in different orientations, it's supported in different ways. So let's look at the supports at the base first. You've got this support, which is in the same plane as the major axis when it comes to bending and buckling. So this is actually really good. It means it's going to work like a fixed support and not going to allow any movement or any rotation in that direction. But in the other direction, the orthogonal direction, which is parallel to the direction of the bridge. This support is going to stop movement side to side because it's out of plane it's not going to prevent any rotation. So it's actually going to work as a pin and this is, this is good but it's not as strong as the support in the other direction. And then if we look at the top you can see it's a completely different story. In terms of the major axis for buckling there's no support at all because these cables are only preventing movement in the other plane. This can actually freely move backwards and forwards. And in the other direction, you've got basically another pin support because these cables are stopping it moving back and forwards, like I said. So in total, this column around the major axis is fixed support at the bottom, no support at the top. And about the minor axis, it's got a pin and a pin. Now the effective lengths of those two things are different. For the fixed free case, the effective length is two times the length we measure. And for the pin pin case, it's only one time the length we measure. And because we want the effective length to be short, for the longer effective length, we actually want to provide the biggest resistance to buckling, which is why the major axis is oriented this way. If you consider the load case of someone actually walking across this bridge, then there's two quite interesting things to consider. The first is that each of these bridge deck panels kind of operate independently of the others. So while I'm standing on the farthest one, there's actually not a lot of tension in the wires that are closest to the pier. They're actually pretty slack. And all the tension is being taken really by these two. And it's actually being transmitted through compression of the bridge deck Back to, the, back to the piers and the tension of the cables. And the other thing to notice is, while I'm walking across the deck, it's deflecting but then bouncing back. And on bridges larger than this, this can actually set up a really interesting and um, quite dangerous phenomenon, which is called resonance. And this is when the movement of the dynamic loading, maybe people walking on a bridge, is with the same frequency as how the bridge jumps up and down, deflects while it's being loaded. And if these two work together at uh, the same frequency as each other, like someone swinging on a swing, then they'll reinforce each other. Like when you kick your legs up at the top of the swing and lean forward on the other side. And this will make the swing larger and larger and larger as you carry on going. And the same is true with the resonant frequency. So if that's hit, then the wavelengths will reinforce each other, the deflection will get bigger, and you will eventually see really, really catastrophic behavior.